Good evening and let's have some fun. So the question of the day is, does saturated fat cause multiple sclerosis and should you avoid it? I'm going to show you some of the data regarding the subject and at the very end I'll give you my personal opinion. So if you don't know what saturated fat is, it's basically this stuff, animal fat. And there are some exceptions to this. For instance, there are some plant foods such as coconut that are fairly high in saturated fat. On the molecular level, the fatty acids in saturated fat have long carbon chains that are filled up or saturated with hydrogen atoms. And hence, they bind to each other and tend to be solid at room temperature. And there are various reasons why we think that saturated fat could potentially contribute to inflammatory disease. For instance, we know that lipid metabolism affects the vascular endothelium in the blood-brain barrier. And we know that saturated fat activates certain pro-inflammatory toll-like receptors and increases certain pro-inflammatory factors like NF-kappa B. And when we give mice a Western high-fat diet, we see changes in their blood with an increase in pro-inflammatory factors like interleukin-6 and interferon gamma. And we know there's a link between oxidized low-density lipoprotein and disability in MS. And also there's a link between liver consumption, which is very high in saturated fat, and disease severity in MS. And so there are a lot of famous books written that encourage you to keep a low saturated fat diet. And some of the authors of these books are shown here, George Jelinek to the left and Dr. Roy Swank to the right, who is sort of the original gangster of low saturated fat diets in MS, who's the founder of the Swank diet. But is there really evidence for what they believe? Let us look deeper. So here is a study looking at saturated fat intake amongst different countries. And you can see that it varies considerably. And take my word for it, there is a very high correlation between saturated fat intake and risk of MS in these countries. Now there are confounders here because there are other known factors such as Epstein-Barr virus exposure and sunlight exposure. And northern countries that are further from the equator, they tend to be less vegetarian and they tend to get less sunlight and have lower vitamin D levels in their population. So there are potential confounders. Also at the very bottom of the list are two Asian countries, China and Japan. And based on my own research in Los Angeles, it seems that Asian people have a lower risk of MS regardless of where they live. Now, if you look at the lipid profile in people with MS compared to controls, there are some abnormalities. People with MS have to, tend to have lower levels of linoleic and arachidonic acids and correspondingly increased levels of saturated fatty acids. And the increased saturated fatty acids seem to be linked to degree of disability in these individuals. This is a study in pediatric MS looking at diet and rate of relapses. And if you look at the bottom of the chart, you'll see that every additional 10% increase in energy intake of saturated fat corresponds with a ha adjusted hazard ratio of 3.37. In other words, for every 10% increase in energy intake due to saturated fats, there's an over three-fold increased risk of relapses in pediatric MS. So what did the Swank diet consist of? Well, he recommended, no, and there were different diets at different points in his career. He had a very long career, but this is just one example. He recommended no red meat or pork during the first year, and afterwards only three ounces of cooked red meat. You could eat four ounces of skinless chicken breast or turkey. You could eat fish. You could have two servings of non-fat or low-fat dairy and four servings of grain per day. And he recommended counting up your saturated fat and eating less than 15 grams a day and no more than 50 grams of total fat per day. And he recommended supplementation with cod liver oil, which is high in vitamin D, a multivitamin, vitamin C, and vitamin E. And so what did he find? Well, this is a 34-year follow-up of his patients. Now, Dr. Swank just recommended to all of his patients that they go on the diet. And so this was not a controlled study and had potential biases. And so he looked at the good dieters and compared them to the poor dieters. He defined the good dieters as those who ate less than 20 grams of saturated fat per day and the poor dieters more than 20 grams of saturated fat per day. And if you looked at survival after 34 years, 67% of the good dieters had survived, but only 21% of the poor dieters. Now, one thing I note is that even the poor dieters only ate 38 grams of saturated fat per day, which is much less than the average American. What about a 50-year follow-up? Now, he was only able to track down 15 of these so-called good dieters, 
All of them were now older, 72 to 84 years old, but 13 were still walking and were described as, quote, normal in all respects, and they appeared to be active and unusually youthful looking. Now, obviously, this is highly biased. People who tended to do well may have been much more likely to follow up. I also have a little bit of inside information from here. Someone who knew Dr. Swank very closely and had a lot of experience uh, with his patients and inherited a lot of his patients told me that some of his patients didn't actually have multiple sclerosis and that he had become somewhat of an unusual character later in his career and maybe misdiagnosed some people with MS, which is very easy to do back before we had MRI scans readily available to all of us. That being said, this same individual told me that he also saw many patients who genuinely did have MS and were doing very well on the diet. And he himself recommends the Swank diet or something very similar to it to his own patients. Now, the epidemiologic data doesn't necessarily agree. This is data from the Harvard Nurses Health Study. And this is a study of over 90,000 women that looked at women and their risk factors, and then such as diet and other things, and then followed them to see if they developed various chronic diseases, including multiple sclerosis and they divided them into quintiles, but there was absolutely no difference between the first and the fifth quintile of saturated fat consumption and risk of multiple sclerosis. You can see 25 cases in the first quintile, exactly 25 cases in the fifth quintile. But one thing to note is that even the first quintile, those with the lowest saturated fat consumption, actually were still eating more than what Dr. Swank recommended. So it could be that you have to have a very low saturated fat consumption in order to get any benefit. There was a second nurse's health study and it showed the exact same thing. Absolutely no correlation between saturated fat consumption or total fat consumption and risk of MS. And there are other epidemiologic studies that show the same thing. For instance, there's a Danish religious society's health study, which looked at Seventh-day Adventists who are often vegan or pescatarian, and they have much lower risk of various diseases such as cardiovascular disease, but they have the exact same risk of MS. What about a more modern study? This is a study published in 2014 at Oregon Health Sciences University, the same place where Dr. Swank worked. And they worked with Dr. John McDougall, who runs a dietary program, who is a proponent of a low-fat, starch-based vegan diet, devoid of processed food and animal products. And he actually did a randomized study. Now, they had a lot of difficulty recruiting patients. And they did show that the patients who were randomized to the diet tended to lose weight, had better cholesterol profiles, had more energy, less fatigue. But there was absolutely no statistically significant difference when they looked at new or active enhancing lesions or a number of relapses. That being said, if you look at the numbers here, there were only 26 patients in the control group, 26 patients in the diet group and it was for a relatively short period of time. And many of these patients were taking disease-modifying therapy, which would tend to suppress their relapses and new MRI lesions, making it very, very difficult to show a difference. And they actually calculated that even if there was a, very, a fairly large effect of the diet, it would be very difficult to show any difference. So what is my personal opinion? As you can see, the evidence is a little bit mixed, but I do think that the epidemiologic and basic science evidence seems to favor that a low saturated fat diet may be good for MS. And even this randomized trial really did impress me. Even if you're not curing MS, there are various health benefits. So I personally do in fact recommend a low saturated fat diet to my patients with MS.